Now at 10 and streaming on CrossroadsToday.com in a follow-up, how Animal Services is stepping in to tame tensions over a feral cat colony dividing neighbors. The trial for a man accused of killing an Edna teen last year is pushed back. What could get pricier if Trump raises tariffs? We'll have a closer look at the potential impact on everyday items. Although tomorrow will be a fairly nice day with temperatures in the 80s, that's the end of it. We're looking at winter weather rolling in as we get to the weekend and next week going to be much colder. We'll have all your latest travel details for this week coming up in a moment. And Ganado battles Refurio in the game of the week here in the regional semifinals. That's coming up in sports. You're watching 25 News Now at 10. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Shauna Curry. And I'm Don Brubaker. The trial is postponed for an Edna murder suspect in a case that gained national attention. Rafael Govea Romero is charged in the death of 16-year-old Lisbeth Medina, who was found dead in her family's apartment last December. Romero's attorneys recently received nearly 400 gigabytes of evidence, which will take time to review. They've also filed motions challenging the legality of his arrest and questioning, claiming Edna police violated his constitutional rights by detaining and searching him without cause and failing to read him his Miranda rights. They have also requested an insanity evaluation. Romero was scheduled for trial next week. His trial date is now pushed back until at least February of next year. One Victoria resident is fed up with the feline freeloaders taking over his yard. In an update to a story he brought to you last week, 25 News Now reporter Trenton Whiting has new details in this backyard cat fight. Trenton. Shauna, Don, thank you. Lilac Lane is home for dozens of stray cats that have made things difficult for some of the residents there. Last week, I talked with the homeowner who showed us the health issues he's creating for him. Today, I spoke with the director for Victoria County Animal Services to see what that department could do to find solutions for this issue. The cat situation on Lilac Street has hit a boiling point, especially for U.S. Army vet Lester Yendry, who has been looking for a lifeline. He's been paralyzed since 2020, and he can't respond to the cat colony gathered at his neighbor's home, who has been feeding the cats for years. Victoria County Animal Control is aware of the issue, and Director Mark Sloat agrees that the neighbor is overstepping their bounds. And when you have a when you have a person that's having problems with cats, whether it's a problem with cats or they just don't like them, there's no reason that other person's cat should be on that guy's property. It's an issue that's common in the crossroads, but it doesn't have a simple solution. Sloat had a similar problem with cats as director in Austin, but progress came over a 10-year period because of the resources and manpower available. It required, you know, two full-time staff working for me, about 30 to 40 volunteers at any given time, and, you know, it's a lot of resources, a lot of time. Sloat says volunteers are the key to this issue. Animal control and local organizations don't have the staff to trap, neuter, and release every stray animal. Residents who can trap and delivered to neuter providers go a long way to solving the problem. But if we could get, you know, 10 or 15 volunteers to go in for a couple weeks and just trap everything they can and then get them spayed and neutered, the ones that can go back could go back. Uh, the ones that aren't healthy, you know, we could deal with whatever way we need to deal with them. But it wouldn't take that long to hit, you know, a block or two either way. Even those who can't trap can still contribute by not letting their pets roam the streets. The, the neighborly thing to do is to, to keep your pets home. Sloat says VCAS has responded to several calls to the home of Yindri's neighbor, but there are still dozens of cats roaming that street since there's no ordinance to stop the neighbor from feeding them. Don, Shauna, back to you. All right, thank you, Trenton. Tesla is fined nearly $7,000 for reportedly exposing four workers to hazardous chemicals without proper training or monitoring at its Gigafactory in southeast Travis County. OSHA inspectors found the workers were exposed to a cancerous substance in their work area in the Cybertruck body area of the facility. Tesla produces its Cybertruck and Model Y cars at the 10 million square foot facility, as well as new battery technology. It also serves as its global headquarters. Well, let's take a first look at your forecast with First Warren Storm Team Chief Meteorologist Mac Perez. And Mac, it seems like you're playing a game of I spy with this colder weather. Oh yes, I can see the I can see winter from where I am, and uh, I want you just to be ready for it. Uh, tomorrow's going to be a beautiful day up into the 80s, but 
All those storms that were on the west coast are beginning to cross over the Rockies, and one of them, especially this one, is going to bring us a pretty good chance of some very cold air and some cold rain as well early next week. We'll be talking about that and taking a look at Thanksgiving Day. All that in just a few minutes. Stay tuned. Back to you. Thank you, Mac. Well, there are concerns of a massive trade war between the U.S. and two of its largest trade partners. This after President elect Donald Trump said on his first day in office, he will quote, charge Mexico and Canada a 25% tariff on all products coming into the United States and its ridiculous open borders. Here's a look at how this could impact your bank account. A trade war is brewing. We're going to tariff the hell out of them. The casualty, the American consumer. We're going to see higher prices. On his first day in office, President-elect Trump says he's putting a 25% tariff on all imports from Mexico and Canada. China will get hit with an additional 10% tax on top of existing tariffs. The reason, Trump says, incentive for these countries to stop the flow of migrants and illegal drugs coming into the U.S. I suspect we'll encounter some new headwinds that our industry will have to navigate. Mexico, Canada and China are the United States' key trading partners. The U.S. imports the majority of cars and car parts from Mexico, so the price of your car could go up. America's top import from Canada is oil. The tariffs could send gas prices up 25 to 75 cents in some regions. And the U.S. imports a lot of electronics from China, in addition to sneakers, toys, sports equipment and furniture. For example, China makes a sneaker. A U.S. company buys it, pays the import tariff and then makes a choice. Eat the cost or pass it to you. Before the higher tariffs announced Monday night, Americans could expect to spend $2,600 more each year under Trump's original tariff proposal. Inflation is expected to rise by 1%. U.S. retailers like Steve Madden are already moving production out of China to beat the tariffs and keep prices low for U.S. consumers. Small businesses don't have that same option. There isn't really an easy solution beyond passing that, that cost onto consumers. Small businesses are very much uniquely challenged. Um, I don't have the option of calling up Jamie Dimon at J.P. Morgan to do a bond offering to build a factory. And then there are retaliatory tariffs, which could also impact U.S. businesses who export to other countries. Mexico's president hinted at that very notion Tuesday. One tariff will be followed by another in response and so on until we put common businesses at risk. Gas, produce and cars could get more expensive in the U.S. if President-elect Trump follows through with the new tariffs against Mexican and Canadian imports. Crude oil is one of the top U.S. imports from Canada. So for gasoline, an expert says the tariff could cause an increase of 25 to 75 cents a gallon. The U.S. imports about a fifth of its agricultural products from Mexico. And with 89% of imported avocados coming from Mexico, your guac or avocado toast could skyrocket. Vehicles are the top good that the U.S. imports from Mexico, and nearly every American automaker depends on parts from Mexico to build its cars and trucks. So a tariff would likely end up raising prices in that sector as well. And this brings us to our viewer poll for today. Do you think imposing tariffs will help or hurt the economy? Um, still, most of you feel that it will hurt the economy, but it has come down a little bit since um, the earlier newscasts. Uh, now at 58 percent um, feel that it will hurt. Um, interestingly, 2 percent don't feel that it would uh, really make a difference either way. So, but if you haven't voted, all you need to do is go to crossroadstoday.com slash vote. And thank you to everyone who took part. After Democrats underperformed nationally and in Texas, U.S. Representative Vicente Gonzalez had some sharp commentary for his party and said he won't be taking their advice. To read the full Texas Tribune article, visit our website, crossroadstoday.com. Big news in the Middle East today, a potential ceasefire deal between Israel and Lebanon after more than a year of fighting. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu recommending the Israeli cabinet approve the deal. ABC's Jacqueline Lee has more. Tuesday afternoon, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu announcing a ceasefire deal has been reached with Lebanon, the U.S. helping to broker the deal. 
President Biden saying the ceasefire is designed to be permanent, but the fighting will continue between Israel and Hamas in Gaza. Under the deal reached today, effective at 4 a.m. tomorrow local time, the fighting across the Lebanese-Israeli border will end, will end. This comes as just hours before massive Israeli airstrikes rained down in and around Beirut. Hezbollah began attacking Israel a day after the Hamas October 7, 2023 terror attack in Israel, setting off more than a year of fighting, which turned into an all-out war in September with massive Israeli airstrikes in Lebanon and an Israeli ground invasion of the country's south. Netanyahu is saying he will do everything he can to prevent Iran from getting a nuclear weapon. Once the deal goes into effect, it would start a 60-day ceasefire. At that point, Israeli forces would withdraw from Lebanon in phases, and Israel clarifying that it reserves the right to strike at Hezbollah if it feels threatened. Netanyahu calling it complete military freedom of action. Jacqueline Lee, ABC News, Los Angeles. Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Crossroads Today. All you have to do is hit the like button and click the notification bell. Stay with us coming up on 25 News Now at 10. Think everything that you see from influencers is true? Well, think again. Find out how many do not bother verifying the information they share. Also ahead, five people are arrested in an international theft ring targeting retail stores. Welcome back. A new study shows a majority of social media influencers do not verify information before they share it online. Researchers at UNESCO surveyed 500 digital creators across 45 countries and territories in August and September of 2024. 62% of those surveyed said they do not vet the accuracy of their content before posting it to followers. Four in 10 influencers said they evaluate credibility, based on the number of likes and views an item receives online. Researchers say the findings validate ongoing concerns about social media personalities spreading misinformation. The Thanksgiving travel period is here. The TSA expects a record number of people to fly from today through Monday. TSA predicts Sunday will be the busiest air travel day of the year in terms of passenger count. Amy Kiley reports. I'm not so worried about the TSA. I'm more worried about the FAA. The TSA predicts this will be the busiest Thanksgiving air travel period ever during the busiest travel year ever. Today, the FAA expects to have the most airplanes in the sky. Its administrator says that could make staffing a struggle. If we are short on staff, we will slow traffic as needed to keep the system safe. The founder of the Points Guy says inclement weather could compound the FAA's issues. He suggests travelers check for delays and cancellations and factors that might cause them before leaving home. He says many airlines allow passengers to change flights even before storms hit. That way they can avoid headaches at the airport. It never hurts to ask. If you're starting to say, you know what, I don't want to travel this weekend. He suggests looking at more than just departure and arrival locations when checking weather. Getting that intel, seeing where your plane is coming from, 
can give you that inside scoop to say, hey, look, and try to call the airline and switch to a different flight that day. And if passengers do get stranded, new regulations might help. If your flight is delayed three or more hours domestically or six or more internationally, just know that you're owed a full refund. I'm Amy Kiley reporting. AAA reports 71.7 million people will drive 50 or more miles for Thanksgiving. It says lower gas prices are a factor, but record Thanksgiving travel may hit delays as severe weather moves across the U.S. The National Weather Service warns of an Arctic outbreak bringing snow, rain and strong winds to the west, Great Plains and northeast by Wednesday. The FAA is also bracing for possible ground stops at Newark Airport due to staffing shortages. On the roads, 70 million drivers could face challenges, especially along I-95 and key northeast routes as the storm hits by Thanksgiving Day. Five arrests are made in connection to an international retail theft ring. Authorities say the five people are tied to a multi-state retail theft ring stealing merchandise from popular stores like Ulta Beauty, Sephora and Macy's along the East Coast before reselling the stolen products. The stolen products were advertised online, sold on the street or shipped to the Dominican Republic where they also operated an illegal brick and mortar retail store. Experts say retail theft has cost the industry $4 billion since 2021. The five defendants are due back in court in January. If convicted on the highest charge, the defendants could face up to 25 years in prison. About 7.5 million people in the U.S. could be getting access to pricey obesity drugs. The Biden administration is announcing a plan to expand Medicare and Medicaid coverage for weight loss drugs, including GLP-1 medications. For some, out-of-pocket costs could drop by 95 percent. The plan could cost $35 billion over nine years, but it's unclear right now who would be eligible and how much the plan would cost people. It's also unclear if the proposal can be finalized before President Biden leaves office in January. Men at risk for heart disease may develop dementia up to 10 years earlier than women. A new study finds that heart disease, the leading U.S. killer for over a century, shares risk factors like obesity, diabetes, smoking, and lack of exercise. Researchers link these risks to reduced brain gray matter affecting information processing, with men showing susceptibility at 55 compared to 65 for women. The study highlights the importance of heart-healthy habits like good diets and regular exercise. Ground cinnamon products were recalled multiple times in recent years. High lead levels raised the alarm in the medical community. Here's ABC's Zorin Shaw with more. Several recent FDA recalls in 2023 and 2024 of ground cinnamon products due to elevated lead levels have raised concerns among health officials. Cinnamon trees have a unique growth cycle that allows them to absorb lead from the soil over many years, which could contribute to the contamination. While the levels of lead found is not expected to pose immediate health problems, its presence in food can be harmful over time. It's particularly worrisome for vulnerable groups like children and pregnant women. Long-term exposure has been linked to developmental problems in children. For more information on recent recalled products, visit the FDA website. With this Medical Minute, I'm Zoreen Shah. Well, good evening, everybody. We're down to 55 degrees right about now. The winds are not very, uh, very gusty, very windy. As a matter of fact, now that the dew point and the temperature are getting closer and closer together, we have a good possibility of getting some fog by sunrise. Other than that, today was a good day, lots of sun, but we got up to 71. It's about where we're supposed to be this time of year. Tomorrow, we'll be in the 80s, and that's it. After that, it's going to be getting colder. We'll be talking about it coming up in a moment.
Well, good evening, everybody. Lots of people will be traveling for the next few days. I just want you to make sure you put a jacket in the back seat of the car and you don't forget it because wherever you're going to go by the weekend, uh, we were looking for colder weather. Uh, although today was nice and sunny, we had that north wind early in the morning. This evening it has settled down and that's why some of that cloud cover or the Gulf air is going to roll back in and give us a little bit of fog. But we look at the big picture and it looks like New York is finally getting a clearing that will only last for about two days. One, two, and then these uh, storms that are in the Rockies right now will start moving in that direction. So the uh, ridge that was keeping all these storms on the West Coast has broken down and now they're going to be moving out. As a matter of fact, we've got several uh, little snow bands that are come through uh, going to be going through the Midwest. Now this area right here is the one that's going to finally push a cold front down into our area. That is a honest to goodness cold front, a real one. Tonight we're getting down to the 50s as you see right about there. Tomorrow a bright sunny day getting up to well not completely sunny but pretty good looking day getting up to about 84 but that don't get used to that because uh, that'll be the last day that we'll see 84 for a while. You see up here, there's our front. That's the one that's coming in on Thursday morning. Uh, so Wednesday afternoon will be the last warm day before things start really changing around. Take a look at the big picture over the next seven days and give you an idea of what's gonna happen. Big snows in the Great Lakes. Uh, tomorrow being Wednesday, we've got a little band going through here of rain and snow mixture to the east. Snow's coming out of Colorado into New Mexico and possibly the Panhandle. As we go into Friday, things look clear and cold for us, all right? So right there, we've got big high pressure here, bringing down that cold air, and so we are clearing out. But after that, uh, when we get to Sunday, we're going to start seeing the frontal system run into a bunch of moisture, and you're all of a sudden, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, you're going to be looking at quite a bit of shower activity over Texas. In fact, uh, solid rain. I wouldn't call it heavy rain, but just all day long, one of those deals. We start off Wednesday morning at 7 a.m., and we'll go to 4, or let's see, 5, 5, 6 in the afternoon. So you can see, uh, you know, Florida's in the 70s. Everybody north is already in winter. We're the last ones to feel all that. And so we've got one more good day to be outdoors if you need to do anything. Looking for 84 tomorrow, southwest wind, a little bit of cloud cover, uh, but generally speaking, uh, a good day to be outside, as you can see right about there. But the seven day gets complicated. Uh, warmth and fog, and then clearing and colder, north wind 71 on Thursday, then only 65 and chilly. That's the high temperature. Overnight lows down into the 40s. Saturday still on the cool side. Sunday is when that strong north wind kicks in and then all of a sudden, because it slows down, we're going to have about three, maybe four or five days of continual cloud cover and rainy patterns. So on Tuesday, seven days from now, a pretty solid rain here in the crossroads. So keep that in mind as you travel over the weekend. Have a great time. Have a great holiday and we'll see you on the other side. That's your seven day forecast reminding everybody we do have a QR code. Love for you to scan that. Put Crossroads today on your phone. So Friday, I got clear and cold just in time for that big football game, Max. Yeah, at least it's going to be a little chilly, but I mean, football, they're yeah. ready for the cold, right? That That's is football weather for sure. But again, like I said, they'll be ready to know what, who they're going to play at here. I'll tell you all the locations and the places all teams will play at here in the Crossroads coming up in fourth.
All right, Crossroads, we have now made it here to the regional semifinal round here of the playoffs. Again, we got a lot of great games here. We're going to look at because all of our teams last week won in last week's playoff matchup. So here are all the 2, 3, 4, and 5A matchups here for this week. We're going to start here in 2A. We got two games here on the slate. First one will be in 2A Division 1. And that's probably, like I said, the game of the year here in the Crossroads. It's going to be between the Referio Bobcats and the Ganado Indians. This game will be a Friday night at 7 p.m. at Sand Crab Stadium there in Port Lavaca. Then in 2A Division II, the Shiner Comanches will face the Granger Lions. That game will be at Tiger Stadium in Smithville, Texas. That game will start at 7 p.m. Now over to 3A, we have four matchups here on the slate. First here again in the top part of the region, Region 3 of 3A Division I. Yoakum will try to get some revenge versus the Columbus Cardinals at 7 p.m. at Katy Legacy Stadium, which you know, it's been a nice, it's a nice stadium for sure there out there in Katy. So it'll be a fun one there to see if Yo can get the job done. For Goliad, they're going to face the Lano Yellow Jackets at 6 p.m. there at Ferris Stadium outside of San Antonio. Then Edna will face the Randolph Rohawks at 7 p.m. at San Antonio's Come Lander Stadium. And then 3A Division II, Tidehaven will then face the Van Fleck Leopards at 1 p.m. everybody there for Tidehaven at Bay City's Memorial Stadium. Then out there in 4 and 5A, here we go with this one to start in 4A Division I. Lavernia Bears will face the Calhoun Sand Crabs out there, and that will also be at Katie Legacy Stadium at what as well, but earlier in the day. So that'll be at two o'clock game there for Calhoun fans. For Bay City, they will face Cal Allen at 7 p.m. out there in Converse, Texas, at Rutledge Stadium. Then in four Division Two, Quero will play top seeded Wimberley Texans at 7:30 at again Texas State University, their Bobcat Stadium. And then Victoria West, they look to keep their playoff hopes alive in a rematch versus the Bernie Greyhounds at 6 p.m. at Seguin Matador Stadium. Now mentioned all those matchups here, but one of them that I kind of said just a minute ago, right? Ganado and Referio. Like I said, I think this is going to be a big time game back and forth game of the year, possibly here in the crossroads. And again, if you want to know about star power, Ganado quarterback Bryce Holman, he's been breaking records here for the Indians. And they got a running back too, Logan Burge, who's been coming on as a late there for the Indians. And then for Furio, their quarterback as well, Keelan Brown, has been dynamic the entire year. The running back, Jordan King, is also, every game he's played, he's peeled off a long run there there for the Bobcats. So this is going to be the key is which defense I think will make a stop at the end will probably win this game. And I mentioned earlier here in our viewer pool who I thought from this matchup will be again the player to watch out for in this game. And right now we don't looks like have the viewer pool. Well, there it is popped up. And we got a lot of different options with Ganado quarterback Bryce Ullman, Refiro running back Jordan King, Refiro quarterback Heathen Brown, or Ganado running back Logan Burrs. And earlier everyone was thinking it would be Bryce Ullman, but that changed here for the 10 o'clock year. A lot of people now are choosing their running back in Logan Burrs. Again, he's been coming on as a late there for that team. We'll see what happens there. I think he can be an X factor going into this game. And then tonight also, the college football playoff rankings came out earlier tonight, and again, the top four stayed the same with Oregon, Ohio State, Texas, and Penn State still there in the top four. Notre Dame moves up to number five. Miami, Florida moves up to number six. How about Georgia? They move up three spots. They were at 10 last week, number seven this week here in the playoff rankings. Tennessee also moves up three spots to number eight. And then here are the next four right now. You got SMU right now. Yes, SMU is at number nine. They have a shot if they win. Win. The ACC, they can get probably one of those four buys out there in the top of the bracket. Indiana drops five spots, number 10 after losing to Ohio State. Boise State is number 11. They have still opportunity. They can win the Mountain West to get one of those top four buys there. Again, in the playoff, new system, 12 teams. And Clemson looming around right now at number 12. So we'll see. We've got a rivalry week here for college football. Texas playing Texas A&M is a huge game here in the state of Texas. Ohio State, Michigan, Alabama, Auburn, you know, a lot of different options here for this week in college football. So we'll keep you updated and see again just two more weeks until we finally see the final reveal of the rankings. And that's going to do it here for sports. Don and Shauna, back to you. Uh, I just looked at the lowest price resale ticket. Lowest price for Longhorns versus Aggies, $525. Hey, yeah. Max says, hey. <laughs> Stay with us. Coming up on 25 News Now at 10, we'll take a last look at your weather. Plus, the traditional Christmas plant is ready for shipment at a greenhouse in Minnesota.
National Christmas plan is ready and waiting for Thanksgiving to come and go. Minnesota is where 65,000 holiday ready poinsettias are ready for shipment. They've been growing since June, all in preparation for the next few weeks. This nursery says all of their poinsettia plants are sold and distributed within 100 miles of the Twin Cities. Well, Two-year-old Everett Redmond's day is made by John Deere thanks to a special room remodel. After battling a brain tumor, Everett's enjoying life and got to tour his favorite brand, uh, John Deere, and uh, his favorite machine, the backhoe. Uh, the fire department there gave him a hero's welcome, and John Deere raised money to buy him every toy that he could ever dream of. Everett's mom says the gifts will brighten doctor's visits, and for the day, Everett got a break from all the battle and had a full day of smiles. Wow. Nice so, job, John yeah, Deere. Job. Nice job. How about the nice weather? <laughs> nice weather for tomorrow. But that's the last day. Be beyond that, things get a little chilly down here. As a matter of fact, on Thanksgiving Day, we're going to catch a cold north wind coming in early in the morning. Uh, it'll be cool and crisp, perfect for, uh, for um, a football game. And, of course, on Saturday, we're all going to be busy uh, watching <laughs> the Longhorns. Uh, but then on Sunday, that's a stronger cold front that will bring us rain, wind, and some chilly temperatures with nighttime lows getting down into the 40s. So wherever you're traveling, travel good, travel safe, and take your jacket because you're going to need it. Thank you, Mac. And tomorrow's National Craft Jerky Day, created by Long Beach Jerky Company to honor small batch jerky makers. The founder fondly remembered making jerky with his grandfather, whose birthday is on this day. Jerky dates back to the 1550s in modern day Peru. Whether it's beef, pork, venison, buffalo, enjoy the protein packed snack that can last for months without spoiling. That doesn't sound very good, <laughs> but, but it's true. I mean, you could take jerky pretty much yeah, anywhere. Yeah, you can pack right. it up and yeah. not, don't have to refrigerate it. And, mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, you know. Enjoy. Well, thanks for joining us for 25 News Now at 10. 25 News Now Sunrise, 5 a.m. Good night.